A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 21st of November 2023. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. So without much delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. The news here is that Avier Milai wins the presidential election in Argentina. Mr. Milai is a far right populist. He promised various drastic reforms like reduction in taxes, reduction in subsidies and denouncing the local currency posi and adopting the US dollar as legal tender. See many times in the newspaper we have seen the terms right wing and left wing but many of us do not have a good understanding about the concept. So in this news article discussion today we are going to see the difference between right wing and left wing. Before that let us look into the origin of the term. See the terms right wing and left wing originated during the French Revolution in the late 18th century. During the French Revolution members of National Assembly who supported the monarch sat on the right side of the assembly hall while those who supported radical change and the revolution sat on the left side. In other words those who wanted to stay closer to tradition were on the right and those who want more change were on the left. This physical seating arrangement led to the term right wing and left wing to describe political ideologies. This is how the term right wing came to associated with conservative and left wing came to associated with liberal. Moving on, let us see the major difference between the right wing and left wing. Firstly, let us look at their ideological differences regarding the society. The right wing is associated with individualism, order and strong social hierarchy. The right also supports conservative social values. But the left wing focuses on equality, social justice and collective responsibility. It also supports progressive social policies like LGBTQ plus rights, gender equality and environmental protection. Now let us look at their ideological differences regarding the economy. The right wing supports free market capitalism and minimal government intervention in the economy. It also favors low taxes, reduced welfare program and deregulation of industries. The left wing on the other hand supports government intervention in the economy to reduce inequality, provide social welfare programs and ensure equal opportunities for all. It also advocates for higher taxes on the wealthy and more regulations on businesses to protect workers and consumers. So these are the major differences in the ideology of the right and the left. But you have to note here that in reality no political party follows the right wing or the left wing ideology 100%. Most parties have qualities of both right and left wing ideology. For example, the right wing in India is often associated with the Bharati Janata Party BJP and its affiliated organizations. They emphasize Hindu nationalism that is Hindutva, cultural conservatism and a strong national identity. This makes the BJP a social right wing party. But in the economic sphere, the BJP has qualities of both the right and the left wing. For example, the BJP on one hand supports capitalism by reducing corporate tax from 30% to 22%. At the same time, BJP also supports various social welfare programs like PM Kisan and PM Ujwala. Like this, all political parties fall within the spectrum between right and the left wing. I hope I have helped you understand the difference between the right and the left wing. That's all regarding this news article discussion. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. This news article reports about the Agri Tecna trade fair which was held in Hanover in Germany. So in this trade fair, tractor manufacturer Tafe unveiled an electric tractor and a hydrogen powered tractor. This is part of Tafe's plan to expand into the technologically advanced European market. So this is about the news article. So in this news article discussion, let us look into the working of hydrogen powered fuel cells. See a hydrogen fuel cell operates through an electrochemical reaction. The hydrogen fuel cell converts the chemical energy stored in hydrogen directly into electrical energy. This reaction also produces water and heat as byproducts. Now 
look at this image this is a schematic diagram of a fuel cell a fuel cell consists of two electrodes a negative electrode or anode and a positive electrode or cathode these electrodes are placed around an electrolyte the electrolyte used in the hydrogen fuel cell is a proton exchange membrane or pem in a hydrogen fuel cell hydrogen is fed to the anode and air is fed to the cathode at the anode hydrogen molecules that is h2 molecules are split into protons or hydrogen ions and electrons e minus with the help of catalyst like platinum as the protons are positively charged they move towards the anode which is negatively charged through the proton exchange membrane after that the proton move through the electrolyte to the cathode the electrons that are generated in the anode region flow through an electrical circuit generating electrical energy at the cathode oxygen combines with the protons and electrons to form water as the by product see this is the simplified version of the working of the hydrogen fuel cell as you can see the only by products of the electrochemical reaction in hydrogen fuel cell are water vapor and heat hence they produce zero emission of harmful pollutants like carbon dioxide co2 carbon monoxide co particulate matter or nitrogen oxides nox which are typically associated with internal combustion engines this is why hydrogen fuel cells are considered to be non polluting in addition to this hydrogen fuel cells are more efficient at converting fuel to electricity compared to traditional internal combustion engines ice this efficiency reduces overall energy waste and contributes to a cleaner energy system finally if renewable energy is used to produce hydrogen the overall process becomes even more environmentally friendly so this is about how a hydrogen fuel cells works so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion this article talks about the impacts of gamma rays burst in the earth's ionosphere see large star at the end of their life undergo supernova explosions during such an event they emit burst of gamma rays such gamma ray burst traveled to 2 billion light year and reached our earth last year this gamma ray burst caused a significant disturbance in earth's ionosphere this incident shows how far away incidents can influence earth's atmosphere see as i said earlier This gamma ray burst originated some 2 billion light years away. If such a gamma ray burst took place closer to Earth, that is within the Milky Way galaxy, then the impact on the ionosphere would be severe. So the article here says that the probability of such an event is really negligible. This is the crux of the news article given here. So in this news article discussion, let us revise about the various layers of Earth's atmosphere. See the earth's atmosphere is composed of different layers each with distinct characters composition and significance in this first we have the troposphere the troposphere is the lowest layer and extends from the earth's surface up to about 8 to 15 km high the height of the troposphere varies with the latitude and season troposphere extends roughly to a height of 8 km near the poles and about 18 km at the equator The troposphere is thickest at the equator due to intense convectional currents. All the weather phenomena including clouds, precipitation and storms occur within troposphere. Temperature generally decreases with altitude in this layer. Temperature decreases at the rate of approximately 1 degree Celsius for every 165 meters in altitude after the troposphere we have the stratosphere between the troposphere and the stratosphere we have the tropopause the air temperature at the tropopause is about minus 80 degree celsius over the equator and about minus 45 degree celsius over the poles one of the important feature of the tropopause is that temperature in this region is always constant 
Now moving on to the stratosphere, it is located above the troposphere. It extends up to a height of 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The troposphere contains the ozone layer. The ozone layer absorbs much of the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. This layer is where commercial aeroplanes fly due to its stability and lack of weather disturbances. Temperature gradually increases with altitude in this layer as the ozone present in this layer absorbs the UV radiation. After the stratosphere, we have the stratopass where the temperature will be around 0 degree Celsius. Moving on to the mesosphere, it is located above the stratosphere. It extends up to a height of 80 km above the Earth's surface. Temperature in the mesosphere decreases with altitude. At around 80 km from the Earth's surface, the temperature reaches 100 degree Celsius. Another significance of this layer is that meteors burn up in this layer, creating shooting stars. After the mesosphere, we have the mesopause. Mesopause is the coldest of all the atmospheric layers. Then we have the thermosphere. It lies above the mesosphere, extending from about 80 kilometers to hundreds of kilometers above the Earth's surface. This layer experiences extremely high temperature due to the absorption of solar radiation. However, despite the high temperature, the density of molecules is so low that it would feel very cold to a human. It's where the International Space Station also orbits. The inner sphere is part of the thermosphere. It is actually the lower portion of the thermosphere. It is called isosphere because sunlight breaks gas molecules into charged particles that is positive ions and negative electrons. These electrons move around in the ionosphere like electric current. Because of these charged particles, the ionosphere has unique trait. One of them is the aurora. Aurora borealis and aurora australis happen in Earth's ionosphere. The radio waves transmitted from the Earth or reflected back to the Earth by this layer. Lastly, we have the exosphere. It is the outermost layer of the atmosphere. It starts from the upper boundary of the thermosphere and extends into space. It gradually makes transition into outer space. The satellites orbit the Earth within this layer. So these are all some of the important points that you have to remember about various layers of Earth's atmosphere. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this front page article. Recently, the Supreme Court took a note of Tamil Nadu government's argument. The argument is that the constitution does not provide governor a discretion to withhold 10 bills which were repassed by the state legislative assembly. See, this has been a burning issue in recent times. As the Tamil Nadu government has moved the Supreme Court over the governor's delay in clearing the bills. This is the crux of the news article given here. So in this news article discussion, we shall understand discretionary powers of governor and the problems associated with it using a mains question. Now look at this question. Let me read out the question for you. The exercise of discretionary power by any office has the moral obligation of objectivity and impartiality. However, the powers bestowed in the office of governor are often mired with controversy. Analyze. See, this question can be asked in GS paper 2 under the syllabus issues and challenges pertaining to the federal structure and the structure, organization and functioning of the state executive. So now let us see how to approach this question. See the main directive in the question is analyze. If a question contains the directive analyze, we have to break the question into parts and carefully examine their details and interrelationships. Know that analyze is digging deeper than examine and it must be supported by facts and data. Today's question is very straightforward. So in the introduction part, you can give a standard definition like according to the parliamentary system of government, the governor is the constitutional head of the state. The executive power of the state is vested in 
governor under article 153 to article 167 of part 4 of the constitution know that the governor is the nominal head and the chief minister who heads the council of ministers is the real head of the government moreover the governor also acts as a agent of the central government thus doing a dual role so you can give an intro like this or alternatively you can give an intro like this the role power and discretion of the office of governor have been the source of various controversies in india in recent times now that due to political differences the relationship between office of governor and the elected government has been strained and tense in multiple states these controversies pose a serious threat to our democratic and federal structures in this discussion we shall see the various issues with respect to the discretionary powers of the government and steps taken to alleviate them so this could be your alternative intro now moving into the main body of the answer first we shall give a brief on the discretionary power of the governor which has been a source of tension in recent times here you can write the points in a table format to economically use the space initially with respect to constitutional discretion the governor is empowered to reserve the bill for the consideration of the president under article 200 of the constitution he or she can make recommendation for the imposition of the president's rule in the state under article 356 Moreover the governor can seek information from the chief minister regarding the administration and legislative matters of the state moving on to the situational discretion of the governor firstly he or she can appoint the chief minister when no party has a clear cut majority in the state legislative assembly or when the chief minister in office dies suddenly and there is no obvious successor secondly with respect to the dismissal of the council of ministers when it cannot prove the confidence of the state legislative assembly lastly the governor has discretion with respect to the dissolution of the state legislative assembly if the council of ministers has lost its majority the exercise of these discretions result in political differences between the governor and state governments which is manifested in the recent times like with respect to the passage of bills recently issue regarding the tamil nadu governor's discretion to withhold the 10 bills which were repassed by the state legislative assembly has reached the supreme court there was also an issue regarding the neat bill in the state secondly kerala approaches supreme court saying that three bills have been pending with the governor for more than 2 years whereas telangana has argued that more than 10 key bill are pending with the governor and some of those bills were passed by the assembly in september 2022 you can quote these examples and show the misuse of his or her discretion under article 200 of the constitution then with respect to the appointment of chief minister in case of hung assembly know that there are various instances like karnataka maharashtra where governor's appointment was criticized as biased and partition to a political party this was criticized in the rameshwar prasad case 2006 in this case supreme court held that the governor cannot shut down the post poll alliance and he or she should give a chance as per law to every political party then the major issue is the misuse of article 356 see it is a discretionary power of the governor to submit a report to the president to implement the president's rule in the state this power has been abused by parties in power at the center to dismiss governments in states which are ruled by their oppositions for example supreme court in sa bombay case 1992 gave a verdict this ruled that the floor of the assembly is the only forum to test the majority of the government of the day and not the subjective opinion of the governor there is a issue with the governor removing the ministers from their portfolios without the advice of chief minister and council of ministers like in the case of tamil nadu and kerala this situation seriously will undermine the democratic political system of government as the governor should act according to the provisions of the constitution and representation of people's act 1951 then politicization of the governor it means the active involvement of the governor in the politics of the state this is also a major issue for example there were instances where the governor of rajasthan 
as support for the central ruling party in elections moreover various issues which we have discussed surfaced from the states where it is ruled by opposition this shows the inherent problem is more political than constitutional so you can write these points in the main body of the answer in the conclusion part you can write about the recommendations of various committees regarding the issue firstly you can quote sarkaria commission of 1988 this committee gave suggestion regarding the appointment of governor it says that the governor should be appointed after consultation with the chief minister of the state he or she should be eminent in some walk of life and should be an outsider of the state secondly punchi commission in 2010 it proposed giving governors a fixed term of 5 years in office it also suggested removing them through an impeachment process similar to that of the president by the state legislature thirdly general suggestion like the governor should in be an active person in politics as it impinge their credibility fourthly there should be a constitutional timeline regarding the time limit for governors assent to the bills so in this way you can give suggestion from various committees and judgments to substantiate your analysis so that's all regarding this new article discussion in this new article discussion we saw about some of the discretionary power of the governor then we saw how the discretionary powers are misused and what can be done in this regard so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article According to the news article the National Investigation Agency NIA has registered a case against the band Sikkim for Justice SFJ outfit and its founder Gurpat Want Singh Panun this was filed because of a recent video clip of Panun in this video he was threatening Air India with a global blockade of hijack and warned Sikhs that flying with the airline could put their lives in danger so this is the crux of the article given here so in this news article discussion we are going to see about nia in exam perspective so what is nia see nia is the national counter terrorism law enforcement agency of india it was created after 2008 mumbai terror attacks now that nia was created with the enactment of the national investigation agency act 2008 it functions under the ministry of home affairs the headquarters of nia is in delhi it has eight branches in hyderabad guwahati kochi lucknow mumbai kolkata raipur and jammu Now let us see the mandate of NIA. See, NIA is mandated to investigate all the offences which are affecting the sovereignty, security, and integrity of India. Note that it includes friendly relations with foreign states. Moreover, NIA investigates the cases against attacks on atomic and nuclear facilities, smuggling of arms, drugs, and fake Indian currency, and infiltration from across the borders, and etc. Now let us see the jurisdiction of NIA. See the NIA's jurisdiction extends to the whole of India and also applies to Indian citizens outside the country. It also extends to the persons in the service of the government wherever they are posted. Thirdly, it is extended to the persons on ships and aircraft registered in India wherever they may be. Finally, it applies to the person who commit a scheduled offence beyond India. against the indian citizens or affecting the interest of india the scheduled offenses are displayed here you can go through it know that the nia was amended in 2019 this amendment has increased the mandate of the agency to include new offenses like human trafficking counterfeit currency sale or manufacture of prohibited arms cyber terrorism under its ambit moreover it empowered the government to designates session court as a special court to conduct trials of scheduled offences so these are all some of the important points that you have to remember about nia so these learned points now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice question discussion now look at this first question four statements are given you have to find how many statements given here is or are correct statement 1 says all the weather phenomenon happens within the troposphere the statement is correct statement 2 meso pass is the coldest layer this is also correct statement 3 ionosphere contains electrically charged gases called plasma 
this is also correct and the fourth statement says satellite launched by human orbit the earth within the exosphere this statement is also correct so the correct answer for the question is option d all the four moving on the samadhan doctrine is associated with which of the following see the correct answer here is option c left wing extremism see samadhan is a doctrine proposed as a one stop solution for left wing extremism problem in india samadhan stands for smart leadership aggressive strategy motivation and training actionable intelligence dashboard based kpis and kras harnessing technology action plan for each theater no access to financing so here the correct answer is option c now moving on here four statements are given and you have to find how many statements given here is or not correct so here first three statements are actually correct site program is a sub component under the national green hydrogen mission seci is the implementing agency of the program its aim is to make india energy independent and decarbonizing major sectors of the economy now the fourth statement says the program focuses on green hydrogen production electrolyzer manufacture and hydrogen fuel cell production this statement is incorrect because the program has two components it focuses green hydrogen production and electrolyzer manufacturing so hydrogen fuel cell production is not one of the component of the site program so the correct answer for the question is option c only 3 moving on this question is about nia three statements are given and you have to find how many statements given here is or not correct see the correct answer for the question is option d all the statements given here is incorrect so with this we came to the end of the video if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel now thank you so much for listening